I'm proud to address you all today in what could be the biggest cultural gathering in the world, Expo 2020 Dubai, about the role of creativity and culture and Dubai's ambition to create a global creative metropolis. 50 years ago, this gathering could have happened in my grandfather's majlis, or possibly in a large tent in the heart of the desert. We would invite you to sit on carpets rolled out on the sand. Make yourself comfortable on handmade cushions. We would welcome you with Arabic coffee and dates. We would celebrate our culture and tradition through songs and poetry. We would tell stories of the desert and the tribes that roamed its dunes. And although you're all seated indoors today, with everything that technology and innovation has to offer, we welcome you the same way we always have and always will, with open arms, generosity, and the warmth of the Arabian hospitality. I remember attending majlises as a child in my family home. A majlis is a forum where people gather to socialize, exchange knowledge and ideas, share stories and current events, and greet guests. People from all walks of life are welcome in a majlis, and from all over the world. They're a very important part of our Bedouin heritage and Emirati culture. I'm very proud to address you today in one of the world's biggest majlises, the World Government Summit. As the chairperson of the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority, I've been entrusted with the vision to transform Dubai into a global creative metropolis. And I've learned through my work in the industry that the fastest way to do this is through open collaboration, teamwork, and enabling and supporting the sector. Today, I'm going to take you all on the journey that we're on and where we stand to date. I've been working at the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority since before its launch in 2008. In 2014, I was appointed vice chairman of the board of directors. And in one afternoon, in September of 2019, I received a notification on my phone. It was a tweet by my father, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. In his tweet, he appointed me chairwoman of the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority. He said he wanted Dubai to become a global cultural center, just like it is a global business center. He wished me and my team the best of luck, and he said he wanted to see the new direction of the authority within a month. Now, there are two things that happened in that moment. One, I was appointed chairwoman through a tweet, and two, I knew I had to hit the ground running. Now, I don't think that this happens anywhere else in the world if this isn't a sign of a forward-thinking, progressive, flexible government, I don't know what is. So the next day, I buckled down with my team at the office. It was a weekend, so it wasn't the great first impression. And we started working on the new direction of the authority. Two weeks later, we presented it to my father, and he gave us the blessing to commence. Six months after I was appointed, COVID hit, and the entire world went into lockdown. Talk about a challenge. I had to make sure we supported the industry. These were unprecedented times we were all going through. It was a time for collaboration and coming together. During the lockdown, we held a series of online workshops just to understand what the industry is going through and what they needed to survive the lockdown. Once the lockdown ended, we conducted a series of majlises with many creatives within the sector. 
I sat with the artists, the designers, the writers, filmmakers, animators, and even game developers. This was a new reality we were all navigating together. I wanted to have an open and honest discussion with them and know what their concerns are and what the challenges they're facing are and know what they need, not only to get through the pandemic, but to survive and thrive after it. For me, this was a chance to apply foresight and proactivity, just as my father taught us. It was a time to take advantage of the circumstances and look at it as an opportunity to innovate and not as a predicament we had to overcome. It was a time to rewrite what was possible for the industry and lay the foundation for it to progress to the next level. In July 2021, we launched the Dubai Culture and Arts six-year strategy. Now, the first thing I told my team was that they no longer work for the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority. They now worked for the creative and cultural industry in Dubai. And this created a mind shift within the team. We now started looking at sectorial progress and goals as opposed to organizational goals. And this was our first sectorial strategy that measured the progress of the sector. One tweet set the vision for an entire industry. And the feedback from our medjlises were crucial in forming all our strategies. Now we had to ask ourselves, how did Dubai become a global center for business? And the answer was very clear. The government of Dubai led by my father, made it very easy for entrepreneurs and businesses to operate in Dubai. They did this through economic zones, incentives, and easier regulations. They made it very easy for people to locate to Dubai, ensuring a great quality of life for them. Now, this was already a successful model that we had to replicate and adapt for our industry. Fortunately, during the past two decades, the government of Dubai worked on systematically strengthening different sectors within Dubai, starting with the e-government to the mobile government, strengthening healthcare and education, creating economic zones, creating industry, industry clusters, and synergies between sectors in finance, hospitality, technology, media, entertainment, among others. We now already had the right infrastructure for a creative industry to flourish. We needed to create the right ecosystem for it to thrive. Now, as we all have seen, the pandemic has proved to us, beyond its huge economic impact, culture and creativity is what makes us human. It is what we need in the face of adversity. A creative city is a resilient one. So we now have a very ambitious vision for Dubai. How do we expect to achieve it? Through our work and through our conversations with the sector, we've identified five targets. The first is supporting talent. The second is making culture and creativity accessible to everyone and everywhere. The third is focusing on Dubai's creative economy. The fourth is enhancing cultural experiences to reach a global audience. And the final target is ensuring our national heritage is preserved, passed on, and globally recognized. One of the most important commitments the government of the UAE has made towards the creative sector is creating the world's first 10-year cultural visa. And I'm happy to say today that 5,000 creatives in Dubai hold that visa. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, the outcomes of the majlises were crucial in informing all our strategies. They were also integral in putting together the Dubai Creative Economy Strategy that my father launched in April 2021. The first part of the strategy is establishing a creative zone in the heart of Dubai's industrial area, El Goz. Now, this is an area that grew organically into a creative community. So it made sense that it had a lot of potential to grow into a creative zone with the right support. For this project to succeed, we had to work with so many partners from the public and private sector. And in the spirit of teamwork and collaboration, we formed the higher committee of the Elgo's Creative Zone. Now, having all the heads of entities working on these projects on one table made it very clear that all these leaders in the Dubai government are now invested in the success of this project. They are now invested in the success of the creative sector. We've been able to move very fast with implementing changes within the cultural industry, within these initiatives, thanks to Dubai's very flexible government system. It's a government system that listens, takes our recommendations on board, and is quick to make the changes that we need. Those changes are crucial to support the sector in growing and to ease operations for them. This allowed us to look at the legal framework in the industry and amend and improve what we needed. Another lesson I learned from my father, laws are in place to make people's lives easier. If they don't, we change them. Some of these things, some of the initiatives we were able to create with this flexible government system was that we worked on creating a one-stop shop for creatives on the Invest in Dubai website. Creatives can now go online, apply for all the necessary approvals, and obtain a creative license in seven minutes. We worked on flex flexible freelancing licenses. We worked on changing the land use within the Algoz area to allow for mixed-use um, buildings to emerge. And we're now working on many more changes. The reason we're able to work on such huge, ambitious projects that span sectors is because everyone in the government of Dubai is led by one altruistic vision. This vision has been instilled in us by our government, and it is that everything we do and everything we work on has to lead to the happiness of the people of Dubai. Now you can ask yourself, why is the creative sector important, especially in these volatile times? While it's hard to argue against the value of culture and creativity, it's also hard to quantify. But because this is Dubai, let's talk business. Today, we have around 14,700 cultural institutions and businesses established in Dubai, employing over 100,000 creative talents. The creative sector in Dubai contributes 4% to the GDP. And I have to mention, this is one point higher than the global statistic. Before the pandemic, the creative industry contributed annual global revenues of $2,250 billion. That's 3% of the global GDP. This sector also employs more young people than any other sector. Now, turning Dubai into the next global creative metropolis is not a dream. Dubai already cemented itself as a leader in the region, and it's now growing steadily into an international cultural platform. We have Art Dubai, the biggest art fair in the region, and a global cornerstone in the art calendar. 
We have Dubai Art Season and Dubai, Art, uh, Dubai Design Week, which are two of the most prominent creative festivals in the region. We have Downtown Design, the region's largest design fair. And we have Emirates Airlines Festival of Literature, which is a favorite among writers worldwide. At a time when defiance against globalization and migration is rising, Dubai keeps building bridges between cultures. Freedom of entrepreneurship is very important in our culture. We will make Dubai the easiest place for creatives to set up and operate. Putting people and communities at the heart of our decision making means welcoming international talent with open arms. We're in a very unique position, having more than 190 nationalities living, coexisting, working with each other in respect and tolerance and celebrating each other's cultures. Diversity can only make our cultural scene more vibrant. Often hear that culture is soft power. I have to disagree. Culture is power, full stop. Economic and social power. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>